Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm telling another ghost story. What is all that? I don't know. Um, as I've mentioned before in my last ghost story, story time video, <laughs> um, I uh, do believe in uh, the supernatural and like ghosts and demons and angels and all that stuff. Like, I believe in all that stuff. I've experienced things that I can't explain other than being supernatural. There's like no logic behind what happened. There is no, nothing I can think of that would be like, this is what caused this to happen. So, yes, I definitely believe there's like another side and all that good stuff going on. And like I said, I've got like a sixth sense or something going on kind of runs in the family my mom's had experiences my grandmother has had experiences several of my cousins have had experiences and for this particular story my dad as well has had experiences at this location which he's like a firm believer of like essentially atheist he's like there's no god no hell no heaven no afterlife you and you're dead you're gone that is it like that is just my dad that's just what he believes and even him at this place there he had no explanation for it he tried to make something up but there was you know really no ex explanation for it so my dad was in the military for i think it's like 23 years years or something he was in the marines and then he went into the um army national guards full time and while he was in the army national guards he was stationed at the Greenfield Armory here in Indiana and essentially just to give a little bit of a backstory Greenfield's about two hours away from us so uh, I think I was in like middle school when he got stationed there and he would have to drive there and drive back and of course like two hours just to get there so he started staying there pretty much during the weeks during the week and coming home on the weekend and he just like slept in his office he had like a sofa bed type thing um, and he just pretty much lived there so it wasn't uncommon. This is like if you talk to anybody from Greenfield or anybody who's worked at the armory, they probably know about the Greenfield armory being haunted because everybody that I met that worked there like had stories of things that have happened to them while they were there. Um, several of the ones that I'd heard about before I ever went and stayed the night at the armory was you would hear conferences going on like in the middle of the night because this wasn't uncommon for the um soldier soldiers to stay the night at the armory if they needed to like if it was the one week in a month and the one week in a month of training was at the armory and they had to come from a, another location sometimes they would just stay the night or you know just because for whatever reason sometimes they had to stay so it wasn't uncommon to hear people talking or conferences going on at like, the other end of the hall and like you'd be the only one there or, like you and one other person but you guys would be like in the same room sleeping and uh, you could hear people at the other end of the hall uh, strange smells um there's this one door that opens up into like the storage area that they stored like a lot of tables and chairs for like when they had family functions or they just really need a lot of tables and chairs for people to eat out or whatever during like training or something and it had these heavy metal chains like chaining the door shut with a lock on it sometimes it would just start swinging for no good reason uh and my dad in particular he was the supply sergeant for the armory and uh, his couch was against the wall of the walk-in vault if you will and it just had tons of equipment like ammunition and guns and like all, all the stuff you want to lock up was in this vault and my dad's um, bunk was, you know, like, here's, in here would be, like, the vault, and over here, like, my dad's office, and, like, his couch that he'd sleep on, and on this side of the vault, there was tall shelves, like, the steel-type shelves or whatever, and at the top, there was, like, boxes of, like, ammo and such. Well, there were several occasions where he'd be laying down to sleep, and he would hear what sounded like one of the boxes falling off the top shelf and hitting the floor and, like, everything going everywhere. And so he'd get up and be like, you know, what's going on? I'm the only one with the, like, way to open the lock or whatever. <laughs> um, and he'd go back there, and, like, the, lo lock, the vault would be all locked up, and he'd unlock the vault and go inside, and the box that he'd heard, like, fall off the shelf would be on the shelf, and nothing was amiss. 
Um, he eventually just chalked it up to mice, but there's no way mice can, like, knock off a big box full of, like, gun magazines and bullets and stuff like that. Like, that just doesn't happen. You know, mice can't do that. Um, and if they did, they wouldn't pick it up and put it away. So, and he also said there were several occasions where he would hear, like, his boss at the other end of the hallway, like, talking. So, after hearing several months worth of this craziness going on, um, my friend and I decided it would be fun to go stay the night at the armory. Our biggest thing, and to be honest, I didn't really buy into all of this. I was kind of like, oh, whatever, you know, dad's probably right. It's probably a mouse. And I was like 13 or 14. So, and again, like my dad's like not one to buy into ghost stories. He's not into that stuff. He doesn't believe in that stuff. Um, and so I just kind of figured, you know, I was hearing the stories that he was talking about, everything I told you that he was hearing from other people and he had a few experiences, but he just always chalked it up to something something so my friend and I thought it would be cool to go stay the night at the armory with my dad and the gymnasium was really kind of neat because it had garage style doors that open or shut so you could like get the military vehicles in and out and the garage doors were like they had windows in them so like, you could see the outside and see stuff and we thought it would be so cool to stay the night in this gym and be able to see the whole outside um, and just, we just thought it would be a lot of fun and we could just stay up all hours of the night and like play basketball and stuff while my dad was probably be sleeping in his office or something. That's what our plan was. So we get there and it was almost immediate that like things started happening. Um, of course my dad came and got us and we went back and it was like after hours, so, like nobody else was there. It was just the three of us. And yeah. It's just, I'm trying to think of like where I want to start and what happened first. And there's a spider in here. I see it. <sighs> that needs to die when Mike gets home. That's his problem. <laughs> I don't do spiders. Um, anyway, so, and it's something I should note on with this armory is that they have a plaque in remembrance of two of their soldiers who died in the Vietnam War. So those are the ones who were speculated to be haunting the armory. And you see that plaque like right when you walk in the front doors and their plaque is there with their pictures, their names, their information, the story. I don't remember all that stuff, but I do remember it was like two men, I think, that uh, they did die during the Vietnam War who were soldiers from the armory. So there's a good little piece of backstory there. So we get there and we're hanging out in my dad's office, just sitting there talking I was, my dad was sitting at his office chair, like in front of his desk, and he had his feet kicked up on his desk. Then there was a chair on the other side of his desk where I was sitting. It's kind of like, you know, if he's having a conference or something, like he'd be in his, his chair with the desk. And then I, you know, I'd been on the other side, except for I had my chair turned. So that it was like my dad, myself, and my friend was across from me on my dad's couch. I had my feet kicked up, like kind of kind of almost in a cradle style on the chair as far as like my back was kind of against the um, armrest and my legs were over the other side of the armrest and then my friend on the other side was just curled up on the couch or else and they're talking. Keep in mind this is a whole concrete floor, there's no basement, there's nothing going on underneath to make things like vibrate and shake and get anything going and nobody is touching the floor to cause any vibrations to make anything move. So we're all sitting there talking, and then I look over next to me, and there's like a small walkway. Like you come in the back door of his office, and there was a bookcase. It's a big, sturdy bookcase that's long ways. So you walk past that, and then like you can walk into the most main part of the office. And uh, on the end of that bookcase, right, what would be behind my chair if I was like turned facing my dad, but since I was turned facing my friend, it was like right next to me, was one of those sturdy metal foot measurement gadgets. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. If I knew how to insert a picture, I would. But it's one of those things, like, it's made out of metal. It has the measurements along the side. You put your foot on it, and you can, like, bring it down to the tip of your toe so that you know, like, how big your feet are. And it was nailed up and hung on this end of this bookcase. That thing was not moving when we came in and sat down. And I don't know where I noticed it just starts to move just by itself. And it's slowly at first, barely noticeable, and then it starts going faster. And it never got, like, super insanely fast, but it was swinging pretty good. And I looked at my dad, and I was like, is this kind of stuff normal for that to just start moving? And he's like, yeah, that happens all the time. 
no explanation for it. Um, concrete floors, nobody's feet's touching the ground. You know, we've been sitting there for a while. There's no reason for that to just start swinging, but it does. So that was like the first thing that was really creepy. Um, the second thing was my friend and I decided to go get a shower. My dad was like, okay, well, we have the group shower in the back if you guys want to go shower back there. Or we have the individual showers at the front. At this point, my friend and I are already getting creeped out. So we decided to go shower together. So we go back to the main showers. And my dad was like, you know, the, the showers haven't been used. The main showers or the group showers haven't been used since their last PT drill or something like that. And it had been a couple of months since, the, since these showers had been used. Anybody who had been there had been using the individual showers at the other bathroom. So... Like I said, my friend and I were creeped out, so we decided to go back there and shower. And it wasn't necessarily that anything weird happened in the shower, but we both just got this really creeped out feeling of, like, somebody being in the shower with us. And the way the shower was designed was, like, you walked in the door and there's, like, this little area, little rectangular area with, like, lockers where, like, you could undress or whatever. And then it has, like, the opening walking into the shower area. And the shower area is, like, the big square room big square room that's tile and it has it had um spigots like all along all three of the walls because one wall was like kind of openish for like coming in and out the other three were just the shower heads so we're in there showering she's facing one wall I'm facing the other and we both just started getting these really creeped out feelings of being watched and we both started having these weird feelings of being touched like somebody taking fingers down your back like just kind of touching you we both got really creeped out and we were like, okay, we're done taking a shower, let's get dressed and leave because we were both just getting really freaked out by the feelings we were getting, like these, just these feelings. Um, and I don't know about her, but my feelings in particular were that it was a male. And I've had, I had that feeling the whole time I was at the armory, which is, you know, a, a, a male spirit. And I did mention in one of my other videos, in my other ghost story video um, is that when it comes to these like spooky happenings one I always look for another explanation and two I don't go looking for them I don't particularly like interacting with spirits or anything like that it makes me really uncomfortable but when it happens and it just happens I don't go looking for it it just happens I can walk into a place and get a vibe and a lot of times I'll get an idea of was it a man or a woman or a child or I can feel the feelings off of this spirit or entity or whatever. I can get a vibe of, you know, are they happy? Were they pissed off? Whatever. And all that stuff. So like, And I was just kind of getting the feeling. I, I never got a feeling of like them being mad. I got a feeling of them being extremely curious, wanting my attention, and a strong feeling of it being male. Which, that could have been played into the fact that there was the memorial mounted on the wall there when you first walk in. Like, you know, for the two guys who passed away, but those are just the feelings I was getting. So, and I didn't say anything to my friend about that, it just, it was what it was. So, after that, we're like, okay, <laughs> we're sleeping in the same room as my dad tonight, we're not sleeping in the gym by ourselves. So, when we go and tell my dad, you know, okay, we had this, you know, really freaky, uncomfortable feeling in the showers, um, can we just sleep with you tonight? He was like, yeah, that's fine, but my office is too small, I'll set up cots in the sleep, in the sleep room. <laughs> in the um, weight room so that there's room for all of us. Well, the way that half the hall was set up, if I remember correctly, or at least several of the rooms, was that essentially it was like one really big, long room, but then it had dividers pulled out, and then there was like doors placed along the hallway. So like, it was kind of like each room was like a, its own room because it had its own entrance, but if you went and pulled back all the walls, you would just have one really long room with like a whole bunch of entrances. So the room we went into was the weight room. And of course it had its own entrance, but it also had the wall divider up to make it its own room. And that's the room that my dad set up the cots. My dad set up his cot um, right by the door and you walk in. So he was along like this back wall. Like, say it's just a square and you got like the door that comes in. Well, his would have been like back here, it would have been his cot. And then you come like down this way and over. And my friend and I were in this back corner in almost like an L shape. I was along the radiator and she was along the wall. And these were like the old school, not really super old school radiators, but I mean, it was a heater. It wasn't like a radiator, it was a heater, but it's like one of those big box style heaters 
that, I don't know, I had them in my elementary school, they're kind of old style, some of you may know what I'm talking about, some of you may not, it doesn't really matter to the story, but that's where I was sleeping. My dad passes out like immediately because he's used to it. He's been working there for like four to five months, maybe longer, and he said that, you know, he doesn't even notice these things anymore. So he's passed out in sleep. Our room, the light was off in our room. The light out in the hallway was still on. And we were just, Cass, my friend, her name was Cassie. Um, we were both had our sleeping bags and we both were on our own cots and we're just laying there sleeping and we're like head to head. Like, her cot's facing this way, mine's this way, we're like an L-shape, let me see, like that. Is that better for you guys? <laughs> Anyways, we're in like an L-shape, but like our, we're head-to-head. -head. And uh, we're both cuddled up in our sleeping bags, and of course, they're like, they're the military sleeping bags, the one, they're ones my dad grabbed out for us to sleep in. And so they have like an inner liner and an outer liner you can zip up in, and the inner liner, or maybe it was the outer liner, I'm not really sure, but you have the ability to pull it up over your head and like really just zip yourself in. So we're both laying there like kind of freaking out. And we start hearing, well, I don't know if Cassie's seen, I don't remember which happened first. I can't remember if we heard the voices first or if I was seeing shadows first. But Cassie didn't see, at least I don't think that she's seen the movements out in the hallway because of the way she was facing. But the way I was facing, I could see the door. And the door had a window so you could look out into the hallway, which is just, you know, a tiny little, tiny little window. But you could see the light out in the hallway and if somebody was walking by, you'd be able to see their faces. Well, I started seeing the shadow of somebody walking by outside, like the outline of a head. Like, there was no detail to it. It was just all black figure. But it was walking by outside. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so that was freaky. And I looked over, and my dad's snoring away. He's passed out. And I was afraid to say anything because I didn't want to draw any attention to myself to whatever this was. Um, so that and this is kind of like the method I go into whenever... Um, I start feeling, or sorry, I'm getting situated. Whenever I start feeling or hearing any kind of spirit around me, and this is probably like the most in-depth experience I've ever had, um, I just kind of shut down. I get really quiet, kind of like, you know, if I don't make a sound, they won't realize I'm here, they won't realize that I know that they're here. So I'm laying there like freaking out. And then I start hearing, no joke, I start hearing my dad's voice and his boss's voice down at the other end of the hall. That was so disturbing because I'm laying here looking at my dad. He is sound asleep and I'm hearing his voice outside at the other end of the hall talking to his boss. And I, oh my gosh, that was a bad one. And I knew Cassie could hear it because she started saying my name. She's like, hey, hey, do you hear that? Hey, are you awake? But I would not talk. I was like... <laughs> I was so freaked out. I just laid there and was like, no, oh my God, no. And I just laid there staring at my dad, listening to his voice at the other end of the hallway. And after like a minute or two, I don't even think it was that long, Cassie said my name once or twice. And when I didn't respond, she probably just did the same thing and just laid there and kept her mouth shut. Like, oh my God, I hope I don't die. <laughs> so, and while we're laying there, like after a little while, um, I stopped seeing what looked like people walking by outside, which that will happen once or twice, where like, it looked like somebody walked past the door, and I stopped hearing my dad in the, in the other end of the hallway, and then I started hearing footsteps, starting at the very other side of this room, and we're talking like the whole room, not like the divided parts, but like all the way down at the very end of this really long room, and there were military boots. I recognized the sound of military boots on linoleum. I grew up with that. That is one of those sounds. Same with when I talked about hearing my grandpa and his footsteps and the kind of shoes that he wore, the orthopedic boots. I can recognize that. I know that sound. I know what military boots sound like. And I could hear that all the way down at the other end of that room, coming closer along the freaking heater, which the heater ran the whole length of the whole room. Um, and then when you just pull out the divider, like you have like this small small space or whatever from the divider for the radiator because, or the heater because it, it went the whole length. At least I think it did. Maybe it broke up here and there. Maybe it was like one per room and the divider went wall to wall. I really don't remember. But anyways, the footsteps started at the very last room. It was quite coming towards our room. Through each of the dividers into our room, I could hear it. And at this point, I just have my eyes closed so sh tight. Like, oh my God, I was freaking out so bad. I just like tightly closed my eyes. I heard it walk all the way up to the foot of my cot, 
walk around the side of my car up to me and then I just got like this blast of cold air in my face like this entity just stuck its face in my face it was freezing cold and I can just remember um zipping up the rest of my sleeping bag the rest of the way to where like my face wasn't showing because I already had it up over my head because I was already kind of freaked out and I was already pretty much zipped up and I had like probably like this much or so of my face probably something like that visible to begin with and it was like a blast of cold air right here and I just remember going <laughs> and I laid like that the whole night like just praying for it to go away and didn't want to move I don't know if it did the same thing to Cassie I don't know, but I, I just, I know that the next day we were talking about it, and she asked me if I could hear the voices out in the hallway, and I told her, yeah, I heard all of that, and she said it was really weird to lay there and hear your dad talking at the other end of the hallway, and we asked dad about it, and dad was like, I didn't hear anything, and he slept through the whole thing, but that was terrifying, that was probably, like, one of the most terrifying ghost experiences I have ever had, freaked me out thinking about it Still freaks me out, gives me shivers and chills. Ugh, there's no part of me that would ever want to go back into the armory. Um, that being said, if you're looking for a haunted place to check out, go there because you won't be disappointed. I really doubt that. Um, so that sums it up for today's ghost story. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you guys have had any kind of experiences with the supernatural, leave any of your stories down below. I like hearing other people's stories. Let's me know I'm not crazy. <laughs> I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.